Hello, everyone. In some problems, sometimes we are looking for an antiderivative, but we have some information about the antiderivative that we're looking for. Suppose that we know what is the y value for a specific x value. In that case, you will be able to compute the unique antiderivative that is such that if you compute its derivative, you get the original function. And also that is such that for the given x in the problem, you get the given y in the problem. So if you have some information and that information is called the initial value or the initial condition of your function, then you're going to be talking about a initial value problem. And uh, in a nutshell, like we will have enough information to compute, okay, the plus C in this family of antiderivatives. So we'll no longer be dealing with families, but with a unique function. So uh, what is the initial value set up? So we want to find an antiderivative big F of a small function f of, f of x, and we know the value, we know the output of big F at A. So this is given in the problem. We know at zero it's equal to 1,000. We know at one it's equal to, to two or et cetera. So we have some information. So the point A, F of A is called the initial condition or the initial value. It depends on which... Uh, reference you're using, then we can compute the unique antiderivative big F of X that is passing through that point A, F of A. Um, so the steps to get to that unique thing, well, first you just compute the indefinite integral. You don't care about the initial value. You just find a full family of antiderivative. Then you just need to replace those. So the, the second step, you replace all the X's by A, the Y on the left side by the F of A, and then you need to isolate the constant of the integration. So you find a specific value for C, and then your final answer, big F, will be the equation plus that constant that is computed. Now, it's not just a plus C, like a generic one, it's actually an actual value for it. So let's just do an example right away. Suppose that F prime is 5x squared minus 3x. Let's find small f such that small f at 2 is 19. So here you can notice that uh, the, the question is we're given f prime and we want f. This is the same thing as we're given small f and we have to compute big f. So be you should be comfortable with that. So if I'm giving you small f prime and you're looking for f, that's the exact same thing as if I'm giving you small f and you're looking for big F. Okay, so you're always given the derivative to start with. That's the main idea. So the first step, okay, so the first step is just to de define an indefinite integral. So here we go. So poof, so small f, okay, will be within the family of antiderivative of 5x squared minus 3x. And we're going to integrate with respect to to x. And then if you apply your power formula, then of course, okay, the x squared will become x cubed over 3. And the x to the power 1 will become x squared over 2. So the family of antiderivatives of 5x squared minus 3x is going to be poof, 5x cubed over 3 minus 3x squared plus c. So initially, we have this full family. So initially, an initial value problem is really a uh, indefinite integral problem. So it, it's really just one more step that we have to do. So what you need to do next now is to find the value of C. So the idea is let's replace all the X's by two, and then let's replace the F of X, the value of the function that we're looking for by 19. So poof. So that's my second step. I'm just plugging the initial value. So here I'm plugging the initial condition inside that part, so f at 2 is 19, x is equal to 2. And now you just need to solve for c, so I'm going just to bring everything on the left side. And computing c in these questions are always done by bringing everything on the left side, so it's a linear equation with respect to c always, so poof. So if you isolate c here, you're going to get 19 minus 5 times 2 to the power 2 over 3 plus 3 times 2 to the power 2 over 2. If you do simplify this and you do compute the value of C, you can get, um, you will get 35 over 3 is equal to C. So that's your C value. So at the end of the day, you just need to write that line where you're going to present your unique antiderivative. 
that is such that at two it's equal to 19. So here we go, poof. Okay, so the final answer, f of x is 5x cubed over three minus three x squared over two plus 35 over three. And that's the unique antiderivative for f prime. So if you compute the of, of small f, you're going to get f prime. And also if you replace every single x by two, you're going to get 19 as an output. So it's you can verify that your answer is actually what you're looking for. All right, next example, a famous example with words. So a lot of those questions, those applied questions will involve words or where you have to read paragraphs. So Bob has a tapeworm in his belly. Bob is me. Okay, this is, of course, a fictional situation maybe. Uh, I call it baby bub. Ah, baby bub. Uh, I caught actually the tape word uh, by eating in a, a restaurant and all. Of course, right now, this is kind of inappropriate saying that you were eating in a restaurant because we all miss eating in restaurants and you would not care if you're getting a tape worm. <laughs> Anyways, so suppose big L of T is the length of the tapeworm in centimeters after T days, after T days that this thing got into my belly. Suppose that after one day, the tapeworm is one centimeter long. So we have some information about the length of that tapeworm. So this is, of course, related to the initial value or the initial condition of my, my problem. So we know that big L at one is equal to one. Suppose the rate of change, remember, rate of change means derivative. That's all terminology that are equivalent availability can be modeled by the following equation suppose that l prime or dldt is equal to 200 over t squared first thing for t strictly bigger than zero explain why big l of t is strictly increasing so here this is a review of properties of derivatives in cal 1 uh, well, for t equal to zero, so here we go. So, poof, so for t equal to zero, the function dl over dt, which is 200 over t squared, 200 is positive, t squared is positive. So that function will always puke out, spit out positive quantities. And when the derivative is uh, strictly positive, this means that the actual function that we're looking for is going to be increasing. So remember... Strictly positive for the derivative means that the function is increasing. Strictly negative means that the function is decreasing. Okay, so that's just uh, some description. So we know this, that we know that Billy Bob is going to grow. Huh? It's going to grow. All right, now let's find that famous function. So the first thing is just to set up the indefinite integral. So we don't care about the initial length. So here we go. So we know L of T is going to be the integral of 200 t squared dt. So t squared is a power function. So you need to bring the power up. So poof. So this is the same thing as 200 to the power minus 2. Now you apply your power formula. Minus 2 plus 1 will be minus 1 over minus 1. So once you integrate, poof, you get minus 200 t to the power minus 1 over minus 1. And of course, once you've done uh, any rules of integration, once the integration symbol and the dt goes away, you go plus c. And here, because we're going to manipulate the function, I'm going to simplify it a bit so I don't like negative powers. So I'm going to bring the t to the power minus 1 down as a t to the power 1. The negative value, I'm just going to put it up. So I'm going to rewrite this as L of t is equal to minus 200 over t plus c. And now the ultimate goal is to find that c value using the initial condition. So we know that initially, when time is 1, that the length is also 1. So you get that 1. So here, I'm using my initial value. My initial condition is used here. So we know that 1 is equal to minus 200 over 1 plus C. Minus 200 over 1 is minus 200. If you bring it on the left side, you get that C is going to be equal to 200 and one poof so i have my c value so therefore my length formula is going to be l of t poof is equal to minus 200 over t plus 200 and one and now what we want to find is how long is going to be that little tapeworm that is only one cute centimeters after one day that it's been in my belly okay so it's very very cute 
but we want to know now what's going to be the length in 10 days. Well, the only thing you have to do is plugging 10 for time in that equation to compute the t. So here we go. So if you replace t by 10, poof. So what is L of t? Well, it's minus 200 over 10, which is uh, minus 20 plus 201. And it's going to be a nice 181 centimeters. So it's a 1.81 meter long tapeworm. So after 10 days, Billy Bob, oh, il, il a tout grandi. Il est vraiment beau. Why? Okay, so anyways, so... Again here, very crucial for initial value problem. It's just integrate, plug your value, isolate C, find the unique antiderivative. All right, for that section, that's it. That's all. Bye-bye, love.